Hello, myself, Dr. B. Harish, Associate Professor in Department of Mechanical Engineering, Maharaja Institute of Technology, Mysore. Today, I will be talking about one of the important type of machine tools, that is milling machine. Now, what are the contents I will be speaking? It is first one, definition. It starts with the definition, then principle of milling, principle of milling, then types of milling process, then classification of milling machine and milling operation. So first going with the definition of milling machine. So how we can define milling machine? So milling machine is a power driven machine in which using a multi point cutting tool, excess material is removed on the given job in order to give the required shape and size. So it is a power driven machine in which using a multi point cutting tool excess material is removed in order to give the required shape and size to the job. So in tools basically we can have two types of tool single point cutting tool and multi point cutting tool. So single point cutting tool is one where it will be having only one cutting edge. So this is the single point cutting tool. If you look at this here it is it will be having only one cutting edge. So if you refer this, so this is the sharp edge. So it has one, got only one cutting edge. So this type of tool is called a single point cutting tool. So this type of tool we use in case of lathe. We use this type of tool in case of lathe type of machine tool. Even in case of shapers, we use this type of tool. So second type of tool is called as multi point cutting tool. So multi point cutting tool. So this is the example for multi point cutting tool. So what is the difference here? You can observe that every tip acts as a cutting edge. So multi point cutting tool is a cutting tool which has more than one cutting edges. So here if you look at this, so this is a multi point cutting tool. It is a milling cutter. We call this as a milling cutter. So every tip acts as a cutting edge as it rotates, as it rotates. So material is removed. So this is the type of tool that is used in case of milling machine. A multi point cutting tool is used in order to remove excess material from the given job to give the required shape and size. That is how we can define milling machine. So once we know the definition of milling machine, so next thing is that, so what is the principle of operation? So coming to the principle of operation, so here the cutter will be rotating you will be having the job you will be having the job so as the job rotates as the job uh, as the tool rotates job is fed and required amount of material is removed so required amount of material is removed so for that we can look at this as sketch as an example so in case of milling based on the direction of rotation of the tool with respect to workpiece we can have two types of milling process. The first one is called as up milling or it is also called as conventional milling. Second one is called as down milling or climb milling. So coming to the principles, principle of operation of milling machine. So you can see this is the work piece. So this is the work piece. This is the multi point cutting tool. So it is a multi point cutting tool which is called as milling cutter. So as the cutter rotates, the job is fed against the rotating cutter. So job is fed against the rotating cutter. That is the principle of how milling machine works. So here one thing it's, it has to be uh, observed that is that the tool will be rotating. The tool will be rotating and the job is fed against the rotating tool. That is the principle of milling machine. So once we know what is milling machine, how we can define it and the principle of working of a milling machine. So based on the direction of rotation of the milling cutter. So based on the direction of rotation of the milling cutter. So we can have two types of milling process. So the first one is called the up milling. Second one is called as a down milling. So up milling come to the first one that is up milling. So up milling is a process where you can see this is the workpiece. 
this is the cutter so cutter is rotating in this direction so the work piece here in this case it will be up milling it is moving in the opposite direction opposite direction so this is the direction so here down milling this is the direction so up milling is one where the work piece is moved in this direction whereas the cutter is rotating in the, in the opposite direction that is called as up milling process so up milling or convention milling is one where the direction of rotation of the milling cutter will be opposite to that of work piece now the other one is called as down milling so down milling once again this is the work piece so this is the cutter both the cutter and work piece is moving in the same direction both the cutter and the work piece is moving in same direction so that is the basic difference between up milling and down milling now if you want to analyze of if you want to go in depth of each type of milling that is up milling and down milling or we can have uh, differentiate between the we can differentiate between the up milling and down milling process so here if you look at this up milling so here the workpiece is moving in this direction the cutter is moving in this direction since the cutter is moving in the opposite direction so initially so the material removed will be very less you can see observe the figure so initially less gradually this yellow color what is written it shows that gradually the amount of material removed it increases with respect to up milling that is the first feature what we can uh, look at with respect of milling so initially since the cutter is moving in the opposite direction so initially very small amount of material is removed and gradually the amount of material removed increases so one more feature what we can look at with up milling is that here the cutter is moving in the opposite direction cutter is moving in the opposite direction hence the job that is nothing but the work piece should held firmly on the table or otherwise it may come out during the operation it may come out during the operation that is the second feature what we can look at with respect to up milling the third point what we can look at is that here since the material is removed initially small so the material removed like this it blocks in between the teeth so these are the teeth of the milling cutter it blocks it does not easily flow out it does not easily flow out hence we uh, will not get a very good finish in case of up milling process the finish what we get on the material will be it is not up to the mark so the material that is removed it blocks in between and then it has to flow out then it has to flow out. that is one more uh, feature what we can look with respect to up milling so material blocks in between the teeth of the milling cutter in between the teeth of the milling cutter one more feature what we can look at with respect to up milling is that here the force applied by the tool will be more hence so the friction produced will be more frequent lubrication is required but in this case once again the lubricant does not cover all the area that is between the teeth uh, easily so the flow of lubricant blocks hence once again we cannot get a very good surface finish so that is one more feature with respect to up milling now coming to looking at the other type of down milling so what are the features of down milling if you look at the features of the down milling the first point is that so both the cutter and the workpiece are moving in the same direction both the cutter and uh, the workpiece are moving in the same direction since both the cutter and the workpiece are moving in the same direction initially the amount of material removed so here you can see this initially it is more gradually it is decreases initially the amount of material removed is more gradually it decreases that is one feature with respect to down milling second one here both the cutter and the workpiece will be rotating in the same direction both the cutter and workpiece will be rotating in the same direction since the both the cutter and workpiece are rotating in the same direction that is cutter is moving in this direction the workpiece is also moving in the same direction the force applied by the cutter on the workpiece is less hence there is no chance of the workpiece coming out from the table during the machining operation 
there is no chance because the force applied will be less since the force applied by the cutter on the workpiece is less so the chances of the workpiece coming out of the table during machine process are very less so that is one more feature what we can look at with respect to uh, your the down milling or climb milling come to the next feature here the material removed so here the material removed it does not block in between the teeth it easily floats it, it easily flows out during the operation since it easily flows out during the operation so we can get a very good finish on the surface of the workpiece so in case of down milling we can get very good surface finish so one more feature what we can look at with respect to down milling is that so during the process of applying the lubricant so the lubricant of the coolant easily flows out it easily flows out and covers the entire surface hence the heat generated during the uh, down milling process is controlled during the down milling process is controlled so these are the features what we can look at with respect to the two types of milling process that is up milling process and down milling process looking at looking at what are the other operations that can be performed on a milling machine so basically a milling machine is produced to uh, carried out to produce flat surfaces so these are the figures if you look at these figures so these are the different operations that can be produced by a milling machine so this is a surface where you are producing a flat surface you are producing the flat surface so flat surface producing a flat surface it can be carried out on a milling machine producing a flat surface so which is not circular in cross section if it is circular in cross section so then we have to use the lathe as the machine tool so when the given workpiece is not in circular cross section so producing a flat surface that can be done on a milling machine second one you can see this figure producing a step face or step surface you can see this is the first step that is created so if you want to generate such type of profile on a given workpiece so we can go for milling machine then looking at the third one is a producing a t slots now every table every table on any type of machine tool will have slots so we call that as t slots because it will be in the shape of the alphabet t because it will be in the shape of the alphabet t so we call that as t slots so generating a t slot on a table so that is done once again using a milling machine generating a t slot on a, a given table so that operation is performed on a milling machine so we can produce flat surface we can produce steps face we can produce t slots and one more operation that can be performed is angle surface generating an angle surface you can see this so here this is one edge so this is at the other edge which is a different angle here we got one more edge that is a different angle so here one more edge different angle so generating or producing an angular surface on a given workpiece producing an angular surface on a given surface so once again that can be carried out on a milling machine one more basic important operation that is performed on a milling machine is cutting gear teeth so gears so gear is a component that matches with other component to transfer motion so generating teeth or cutting teeth on a gear so you can see these are the teeth that is cut so cutting teeth on a gear so that operation can also be performed on a milling machine so the basically it is used for cutting teeth other than cutting teeth so we can produce flat surface step surface angular surface and t slots so these are the different operations that can be performed on a milling machine so continuing with the milling machine so we will be discussing the classification of milling machine so come to the classification of milling machine so the first one is called as column and knee type then bed type of milling machine then third one planar type of milling machine the last one is special type of milling machine so there we got rotary table type drum type profiling type tracer control type now if you want to understand the classification of milling machine so first basically what are the 
parts of a common general used milling machine you should know so this is the common general type this is the horizontal type of milling machine horizontal type of milling machine so what are the parts that come across with respect to milling machine the first one is the base and knee and column knee and column so these are the two major parts column and knee hence based on this the first type is called as column and knee type of milling machine based on that the first type that is called as column and knee type of milling machine so here we got the first one is plain milling machine so what is a plain milling machine so plain milling machine is one where it will have all these parts base you will be having knee you will be having column over arm so all these basic parts will be there but everything except uh, feeding the tool all other things should be done manually so all fixing the tool then aligning the uh, work piece and operations are done manually so manually when the operation is done that type of milling machine is called as plain type of milling machine so there we got two types horizontal milling machine vertical milling machine so this classification so this classification is done based on the direction of axis of the milling cutter so if the direction of the axis of the milling cutter is in horizontal direction we call that as horizontal milling machine if the same the spindle is in vertical direction we call that as vertical milling machine so we will we'll discuss in the later part the individual parts of uh, the horizontal milling machine and vertical milling machine its construction and working so here at this stage looking at the classification it's called as horizontal plain milling machine because the axis it will be like this horizontal in the horizontal direction so then we call it as horizontal milling machine if the same axis is in vertical direction so then we call it as a vertical milling machine that is the first type under column in knee type second one is universal milling machine so universal milling machine is one where it will be having a three movements that is the table can be moved 45 degree on either side so what is table so you can see look at this figure so the table is placed on the saddle the table can be moved on either direction 45 degree so then that is the additional movement that will be there that is additional movement will be there if a on a, if a column in a column and knee type of milling machine if the table can be moved on either side by 45 degree on both sides so that if that provision is there that type of milling machine is called as universal milling machine then on the same column and knee type we have got one more that is called as omniversal milling machine one more we have got that is called as omniversal milling machine so omniversal milling machine is one where the table can be swiveled at an angle so it will be swiveled at an angle so if it is only 45 degree it is universal if it can be swiveled about the knee then it is called as uh, that type of milling machine is called as omniversal milling machine so that is the first type of classification that is column and knee type where we got first one plain milling machine so there we got two types horizontal and vertical milling machine so this type of classification is done based on the direction of the spindle axis if it is horizontal it is called horizontal if it is vertical it is called vertical second one universal milling machine under the plain milling machine so it is the type of milling machine where the table can be tilted at 90 uh, 45 degree on either side then omniversal milling machine is one where the table pan can be swiveled about the axis so then it is called as the uh, omniversal milling machine that is the first classification second one bed type of milling machine so bed type of milling machine is one where so if you take a, a normal column and knee type of milling machine so this is the figure that shows the column and knee type of milling machine so here the table is placed on the saddle saddle is placed so this is the saddle this is the table so the table is placed on the saddle saddle is placed on the knee so the limitation here in this type of milling machine is if you got a very big size of job if you got a very big size of job so that cannot be accommodated here because of its size and the space availability and its weight so when that is the case so we go for the bed type of milling machine so bed type of milling machine is one where column will be not there instead of the column so on the bed itself the table will be there on the bed so here column 
eliminated the column you can have a bed on the base itself so then that type of milling machine is called as the bed type of milling machine so what is advantage is here so whatever may be the size whatever may be the weight of the job i can place it because bed is directly placed on the base hence it can take uh, heavy weight jobs <coughs> here we got three types simplex milling machine duplex milling machine and triplex milling machine so this classification is done this classification is done based on the number of spindles that are provided made provision in the milling machine if we got only one spindle then it's called as simplex milling machine if it has got two spindle so this is the spindle this is a spindle if we got two spindles then it's called as duplex type of milling machine if we have got three spindles then it's called as triplex type of milling machine that is the second type of classification that is bed type of milling machine third one is planar type of milling machine so planar type of milling machine is one it is similar to a planar machine so planar machine is once again one more type of machine tool that is used to produce basically flat surfaces on a given job now what is the difference between a planar ma 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 machine and planar type of milling machine is that in a planar we will be having a tool that is flat it will be having a flat surface here the tool is replaced by the milling cutter so tool is replaced by the milling cutter so then that type of uh, milling machine is called as planar milling machine then we got special types of milling machine so special types of milling machines are those milling machines which are designed to perform certain basic uh, that is unique operations so it cannot be used generally for all, all other operations so as is, uh, as it was mentioned in the previous uh, uh, slide where it was i had shown the different different operations that can be performed but special type of milling machine is one which is designed and developed to perform only the specific operations specific operation that type of uh, milling machines are called as uh, your special type of milling machine so where we got rotary table type so rotary table you can see the table this is a table the table will be having a rotary table type so it will be having a table itself rotated so then that is called as rotary table type second is drum type so table will be circular in cross section circular in cross section it is a drum type of uh, cross section it will be having so then it is called as a drum type of uh, milling machine profile type one more then tracer control where we will be having a tracer so as the tracer moves along the specified uh, drawing be uh, similar to that movement the cutting can be done on a given job so that is once again one more type of special purpose type of milling machine that is called as tracer control milling milling machine so this is the general classification of different types of milling machine so next we'll be discussing two types of milling machine in detail so one is horizontal milling machine and the second one is vertical milling machine under each case what are the basic parts of horizontal milling machine so its construction then its working so how that particular milling machine can be used to perform different operations so horizontal milling machine and vertical milling machine that comes under the heading that is column and knee type under column and knee type we got plain milling machine so there we got horizontal and vertical so first we will take up horizontal milling machine horizontal milling machine so this is once again the same figure that represents a horizontal milling machine why it is called horizontal milling machine it's called as horizontal milling machine because the spindle axis spindle axis is in horizontal direction spindle axis in horizontal direction so what are the different parts what are the different parts of this horizontal milling machine so coming to the first one the base base is the bottommost part of horizontal milling machine so it is the part on which all other components are standing on the base so base is one which is taking the entire weight of the milling machine so base is one which is taking the entire weight of the milling machine that is the bottom most part since it is taking the entire weight of the milling machine it should be strong enough normally it is made up of cast iron now normally it is made up of cast iron because cast iron has got high strength it has got since cast iron has got high strength so it this base will be made up of cast iron that is the first part of a horizontal milling machine then come to the second part column 
Second part is column one. This is the column part. So column is the part that will place vertically on one end of the base. Column is the part that is placed vertically on one end of the base. So this is the column. It is it is a very big construction uh, constructed part. It may be circular in cross section or it may be in rectangular cross in cross section. So that is the column. So this is the column which is standing on one end of the base. The column will have vertical gateways on the front face. So front face of the column. So this is the column. This is the front face. This is the back space. So front face on the front face you will be having vertical gateways. This is the vertical gateways. Front face of the column is will have vertical gateways. And the entire driving mechanism will be housed inside the column. Driving mechanism is, is the mechanism which drives the machine. It, it drives the machine. It should have a motor. It should have a belt and driven mechanism. So this spindle has to rotate. If spindle has to rotate, it should have a motion. So that motion we are getting from a motor that is placed inside this column. Entire driving mechanism, entire driving mechanism. So that is placed inside this column. That is the second important part. It is a uh, column is a vertical support that is placed on one end of the base. It will be very big in size. It may be circular in cross section or it may be rectangle in cross section. And it is the one which houses the entire driving mechanism. It is the one which houses the entire driving mechanism. And on the front face of the column, we will be having vertical guideways. Vertical guideways. Then come to the third part. It is the knee. It is the knee. This is the part that is called as knee. So knee is once again a very big component on a milling machine. So, which will be standing on this knee elevating screw. So it will be very big in size. So, this knee can be moved in vertical direction. This arrow mark, you can observe the arrow mark. So, it can move on vertical, vertical direction. So, up and down it can move. Since it is a very big size of part, so it has to be supported one more part. That is, that job is done by this knee elevating screw. Knee elevating screw. And this is the guideways. It has to move in vertical direction. So the thing that guides its movement is vertical guideways. So it can be moved with respect in the direction of the vertical guideways with the support of knee elevating screw. That is one more part. That is one more part. Now on the top face of the knee, on the top face of the knee, you can observe here. So you will be having one more guideways that is called horizontal guideways. So we have got one more guideways on the top face of the knee that is called as horizontal guideways. So on the horizontal guideways, we will be having this saddle. So this is the saddle. So this is the total shape of the saddle. On the saddle, the table will be placed. On the table, the workpiece is placed. The table will be having T-slots as you can observe in the figure here. T-slots are used to lock the job firmly during performing the operation during performing the operation to lock the job these t slots are uh, that are used so knee will be there knee supported by knee elevating screw it is uh, it is supported once again on the other end by the guideways so knee can be moved in vertical direction so this movement can be used to adjust the the height of the job so adjust the height of the job depending upon the height of the job it can be lowered and if it is more it can be it can be raised that is possible that uh, movement is given to the knee that is done by this knee elevating screw support with the uh, supporting knee elevating screw and this table so the table the saddle on the saddle we got table so this can be moved in horizontal direction once again on the same horizontal guideways on the same horizontal guideways that is provided on the top face of the knee so this table can be moved in this direction you can see this arrow arrow mark direction so this helps the shows the direction movement of this table so once again this direction or this movement is used to adjust the position of the job that has to be a, a position of the job on the given workpiece so that is this particular about this part now one more important part is overarm so overarm is one which supports it which will be on the column on the opposite end of the base on the opposite end of the base so on the column we have got this part that is called as overarm overarm so this overarm is one which supports the column on the upper end next important part is this spindle and harbor 
So this is called as harbor. This is called as harbor. So harbor is nothing but a lengthy shaft is called as an harbor. So when the length of the shaft, shafts were circular in cross section. So when the length of the shaft is uh, more, then we call it as a harbor. So this is the harbor. So it is connected to a spindle. The spindle is connected to the driving mechanism inside the column. So when the spindle receives the motion from the driving mechanism, the harbor rotates. On the harbor, we have got this cutter. So this is the milling cutter. This is the milling cutter is fixed on the harbor. Now, since the length of the harbor is more, since the length of the harbor is more, so it is supported by yoke, a part called as yoke on the other end opposite to the column. Since its length, when it rotates, so it should have a supporting part. So that part is called as yoke, which supports the harbor on the other end. Whereas on the front end, it is will be connected to the spindle. Spindle is connected to the driving mechanism. So these are the individual parts. These are the individual parts of a horizontal milling machine. Next, coming to the working of milling machine. So once you understand the individual parts of a horizontal milling machine, so how the required operations performed on a horizontal milling machine. So first to begin with, the job is fixed on the table. Job is fixed on the table using the movement of the knee and the table. So using the movement of the knee and the table, the position where the machining operation has to be performed on a given job, it is adjusted. Then the tool is fixed on the harbor. So this is the direction of the rotation of the harbor. So in the same direction, the tool also will be rotating. So job is fixed here. The position of the where the operation is performed is adjusted using a table movement and the height of the job is adjusted using the knee movement. Then the tool is fixed, the machine is switched on. So then the table is brought in contact with the, sur the surface of the tool. Table is moved, it is brought, so on the table we will be having the workpiece. Workpiece is brought in contact with the cutter. So and as the machine is switched on, the spindle will be rotating, the required operation will be performed on the that is given job by the milling cutter, by the milling cutter. So this is how the operation is performed on a horizontal milling machine. So that's about the horizontal milling machine, its construction and working of a horizontal milling machine. So we'll continue with the other type of milling machine. So vertical milling machine. So coming to the individual parts of a vertical milling machine. So as usual, we will be having the base column. So only change between horizontal milling machine and vertical milling machine is that the spindle axis is vertical. Spindle axis is vertical. You can observe that. Spindle axis is vertical. Base, same function. It is the bottom most part. It takes the weight of the entire part. Vertical column. So same, which uses the driving mechanism as in case of horizontal milling machine. Knee will be there. Knee elevating screw. Then vertical gateways. On the surface of the knee, we will be having horizontal gateways on which we will be having a saddle and table placed. So only thing is that there in case of horizontal milling machine, we will be having a horizontal spindle. So harbor, harbor is connected to spindle, but here spindle is vertical. So this is the spindle head. So it is a vertical direction to which the spindle is connected and the cutter is connected. The spindle can be moved in this vertical direction. So spindle head can be moved in this vertical direction. So that is one feature. And the table can be moved as usual. So knee can be moved in vertical direction. So saddle can be moved in horizontal direction. So three movements. Knee can be moved in vertical direction to adjust the height of the job. The spindle head can be moved in vertical direction up and down. And table can be moved on this slot that is uh, horizontal gateways to adjust the size of the job. So coming to the operation, the given job is placed on the table, then the tool is fixed and the machine is switched on, the knee is moved, it is adjusted to the position of the uh, job where the operation is performed. So as you give the feed, required operation is performed by the cutter. So only change is that spindle axis will be vertical direction. One unique feature of this vertical spindle machine is that so you can see the markings here. The spindle head can be tilted on either, either direction. So that angular surface can be generated. Angular surface can be generated on this vertical milling machine. So these are the individual parts and working of a, that is, vertical milling machine. 
Next, coming to the last topic, so that is milling operations. So what are the different operations that can be performed on a milling machine? So one thing here it is unique is that some of the operations can be performed on horizontal milling machine, some of the operations can be performed on vertical milling machine. That is the first thing. Second then, so for different operations, different tools are used. A common tool cannot be used for performing all operations. So different tools are used performing different operations and some can be performed on horizontal milling machine and some of the operations can be performed on a vertical milling machine. So coming to the operations, so six operations we will be discussing. First one is the plane milling operation. So plane milling operation is the operation that is performed on a milling machine to generate a flat surface on a given job to generate a flat surface on a given job. So that particular operation is called as plane milling operation. So this is done on a horizontal milling machine. You can see the axis is horizontal. This is the cutter. This is the workpiece. This is the table that is fixed on a saddle. And this is the direction of rotation. So as the table is moved, as the workpiece in, comes in contact with the cutter, the job is performed. So here one thing that is, uh, that is to be noted is that the width of the cutter will be more than the width of the job. In a single stretch, the entire surface can be machined, entire surface can be machined and required operation can be performed on a, that is, uh, on a given job. That is called as plain milling. Second one is face milling. So face milling is, that is done on a vertical milling machine. So the spindle axis is in vertical direction, table is there, workpiece is there. So here, the cutter is in vertical direction. So it is also used to generate the flat surface. It is also used to generate the flat surface. So one thing is that both are used for generating flat surfaces. So face, face of the tool is performed, that is uh, machine in order to give the plane surface that is called as face milling machine, but it is performed on a vertical milling machine. Then third one is straddle milling operation. So shadow milling operation is an operation that is performed to machine ends of the job simultaneously. You can see this is one, this is the operation, this is the end that is reduced. So we will be having two cutters, we will be having two cutters that is a side milling cutters. In between that we call the spacer is placed. Depending upon the width of the workpiece, a spacer is fixed. So as the operation, as the table is moved, so immediately this amount of material is removed, this amount of material is removed. So simultaneously both the ends material are removed. So we can uh, perform the, reduce the length of the job quickly by going for this straddle milling. So two cutters, direction of rotation of the cutter, this is performed on a horizontal milling machine. So the cutters that are used are called as side milling cutter. Then form milling, so you can see this is the form milling operation that is performed on a milling machine. It is used to generate the curved surface, curved surface on a given job, curved surface on a given job. So then we, it is per, uh, this type of operation, we go to this type of operation. So here it is performed on a horizontal milling machine. The tool what we use is called as a form tool. The tool what we use is called as a form tool. So con, we can, I can generate a concave surface or a convex surface. If I want to generate a concave surface or concave surface, I can go for this operation. Then gang milling. So when you gang milling, gang means group. A group of operation that is more than one operation can be performed on a given job. Then that particular uh, operation is called as gang milling operation. Here you can see this is one tool, this is the other tool, this is the other tool. So three tools are used. Simultaneously this flat surface is machined, the edges, the edges are also machined. So simultaneously, so the, this operation is performed to flatten this surface and this using this tool. So we will be having a, a three types of tools fixed together and the operation can be uh, uh, performed simultaneously so that the totally we can generate a new surface on a given job. That is called as gang milling operation. Then one more is mill, uh, milling keyways. So keyways are, it is also called as slots. It is also called as slots. T slots we have seen just now here in the table. So uh, we can have a dota slot also or we can have T slots. In order to generate that, so this is the slot that is generated on a given job. This is a dota job, uh, slot. So this is done on a vertical milling machine. So this is the workpiece table. So this is the direction of rotation. So this is the direction of rotation. As the table is moved against the rotating uh, cutter, 
the required operation is performed. So these are the some of the operations that can be performed on a milling machine. So plane milling, face milling, then straddle milling, form milling, gang milling, and milling key base or slots.